another police allegation that impaired driving was involved. A man in his 20s is dead and a woman is charged with impaired driving. A 43-year-old woman is dead and her three-year-old daughter is fighting for her life. Impaired driving causing death. It's a line you hear far too often on the news. It's something my colleagues and I have to report on far too often. A life lost, a family destroyed, all because someone decided to drink and drive. Over well, the holidays fast approaching, Mad Canada held their red ribbon campaign launch today. The scenes are horrific. All that's left, the fragments of a life shattered on the pavement. A tragic, twisted tale that has played out over and over again. It forever changes families and the first responders who arrive and then have to deliver the news that a loved one has been killed by a drunk driver. I can tell you from my own personal experience as well, walking up a driveway, looking for an address and seeing that number and ringing that doorbell uh, at the middle of the night. I got a knock on the door. I kind of looked through the glass of my door and I could, at the time I had a white car and I could see another white car parked behind my white car. Latoya Garcia will never forget the day police arrived at her family home to deliver the news. And I said, is everything okay? What happened to Cassius? Can you, you know, what's going on? And they're like, unfortunately, there was an accident and Cassius didn't make it. Her brother, 25-year-old Cassius Richards, had been killed by a drunk driver. If you've ever had to identify a loved one after a tragic loss, it is a movie that plays in your head. It was around 7 p.m. on November 24th, 2014, when Cassius was driving home to his family's place. He was going southbound here on Orton Park when 22-year-old drunk driver Matthew Habchi, going westbound, ran into his vehicle and killed him instantly. This is what the scene looked like that night. Both vehicles suffered heavy damage. The sedan had its entire driver's side smashed in. It happened just after 7 at Ellesmere and Orton Park, east of Markham Road. A full investigation is underway. He crushed him so badly that he pushed my brother into the passenger side. So when the police showed up, they were looking for, they were actually looking for the driver because they thought that my brother was the passenger. He was crushed so badly that they couldn't even get him out of the car. They had to cut him out. So far this year on OPP highways, 36 people have died compared to 56 fatalities during all of 2018. Over the last weekend alone in Toronto, 12 people were charged with impaired operation of a vehicle. The number of charges overall are still far too high. They always say time heals our wounds, you know, they're in a better place. The grief will go away. It never goes away. We saw him on Sunday and he was gone on Monday. So, no, time doesn't heal all wounds. It's what you do with the time. And what Latoya is doing with her time is getting the message out about drinking and driving, as she did today at the Red Ribbon campaign launch. We saw Chief Saunders, Mayor John Tory, tie Red Ribbons to first responder vehicles outside of police headquarters. But one has to ask if the message is getting through. For some, it obviously isn't. Year to date so far in the city of Toronto, we have more than 900 impaired driving charges.